Hey folks, I wanted to take a moment and give you a sense of what's coming up as we are rounding the bend to the last three weeks of the course. The last three weeks is really pulling together everything we've learned and getting a sense of what should go where. I'm using a previous student's assignment who did an amazing job of, of rendering to be sure, but more specifically, it's the detail in her work that I really appreciate. So I'm gonna pull out a couple of, of ideas here and a couple of conversations just to make sure that everyone sees uh, the understanding of, of what's possible in a site like this. Just wanna make sure that we're on the right page again. Great, awesome. So when you're doing your section, just make sure like Lauren has done here is to give me uh, an A and a B and really give me a sense of where that A and that B start so I can see the entire site. The other thing that Lauren did, which if you'd like to, I highly recommend is giving us a sense of what is the solar angle for both the solstices as well as um, the, uh, the equinox. And it gives us a sense of what we're looking at for summer sun, which is of course a bit more steep, and for winter sun, which will give us a bit more of a steeper angle. As we're taking a look at areas uh, in terms of houses, you can also give us a sense of what that looks like. One thing that Lauren did, which I recommend is, if anything is directly on the line, as she put through here, that those are bolded, and anything that isn't on the line is just outlined or shaded in a grayscale. She's also given me relative distance between each, and she's given me relative heights of everything, which is fantastic. She's given me a height of the different trees, and she's used a common um, abbreviation, common legend for all of her plants in this assignment. The next thing she did was she gave me a sense of all of the different microclimates in that section. So this can be done easily. Again, Lauren has amazing skills in graphic rendering, so I'm not asking for that. But you can do this with a pencil and crayon and just showing us generally what these sites are. And again, showing photos. One of the reasons that Lauren was able to advance so quickly in the course is because she took a lot of the feedback I gave and incorporated it quite quickly. So you can see just with a little bit of coloration, she's really shown the different areas, the different sections, and shown what all the images are. So she said full sun, very hot and dry, south facing, partial shade, dappled light, cool in summer. And again, micro zones, microclimates, we always want three things. What is the solar real estate? What is the resource there? What is the moisture like? And what is the temperature? Because sometimes those are independent of each other. Next, she gave me another section because she wanted me to get a sense of the entire place. And then she gave me a bit of a perspective, which is not necessary, uh, but it gave me a really good sense of this area and gave me a sense about her entire site and I was able to give her more and more specific feedback. As we go into the local ecology, she pieced out everything from solar energy going to producers and decomposers, moving to primary consumers, secondary consumers and tertiary consumers. Really fantastic to see and again used color in a great way. Uh, then she went into local ecology, gave me an amazing smattering of birds gave me another specific type of ecology in the area, and as always, gave me sources for everything. So I completely understood where she was coming from. Please do source all your information. Again, with local ecology, this is probably one of the most important uh, sub-assignments you can do that is not required by us, but it was a suggestion from me to Lauren because she was so advanced in her understanding or she wanted to be advanced, was really getting a sense of what do we have that is the first pioneers of the weeds and grasses after disturbance in your biome. And she found out that it was goldenrod, raspberry, uh, red raspberry and broadleaf plantain. Then as we get into shrubs and young community forests, what are we looking at? White birch, trembling aspen and poplar. What is into our taller super canopy white pine? And once we get into a full climate forest, what are we seeing? American beech and sugar maple. So again, fantastic to see. And again, showed me again, not just graphically, but also in a table. Okay, what do we have at a climax? What's mid to late succession? What's early succession? What's a type? What's their tolerance? And then pulled each of those out yet one more time to really make sure that that was understood. I'm going too fast, feel free to pause the video and go back at any time. So when we got into the plant dynamics, um, I really wanna recommend that people do not just do a guild. That is totally within the, um, the pre-existing conditions of this assignment, which is completely fine, but I don't think it's the highest value. 
I think the highest value you can give yourself is if you give us a sense of the, the totality of the site and start to get a sense of a simple design. It doesn't have to be um, a full design as Lauren has started to um, consider here, but to really understand a site, don't just work with a single guild. If you're in a balcony, if you're in a backyard, that's totally fine. If you're on broad acre, give us a bit of a bigger understanding. So one of the things is always understanding what is the existing orchard and what, what, what are all the different elements there? And she, she did that. Give us a statement of purpose so we know what this is about. Give us a few of our goals. Again, always give us, if we ever do a detail, give us the big map and then the small map. And then going into it, really starting to think about what are the different elements and why are they chosen? So not only has she given us an incredible uh, legend here, which she's put down at the bottom with plant species, she's also given us working in all of these. Experiment with a few berry bushes to start. If light conditions are too low, plant smooth sumac or eastern hemlock. She's also shown us what she wants to do with these boomerang, boom, boomerang swales, which is a great way to catch and store and catch and store and drain. And she's also given us a cross section to show us how this is going to work and how the sunlight is going to affect the different plants and animals. So again, really important to show what's going to go where. And I really appreciate seeing these small images. It just gives me a sense that she knows uh, the different elements. She knows their sizing. She's put a human for size in here. And it's given me a really good sense about what I'm looking at. And then she's gone into each of the species, given us um, the light requirements, given us the moisture requirements, given us the binomial Latin name, the type, the USDA zone. Uh, you can use your own native zone. Uh, if you have a zone for your country, you don't have to give the USDA zone. She's in Canada, but she's decided to do USDA because she has access to a bunch of um, American uh, plant stock. What's the mature height, minimum root depth, root pattern? Is it a nitrogen fixture? Uses and functions. What is uh, the location, so existing or proposed, and what is the water management. She's also given us a photo. She's also given us a line drawing of what the leaves and the seeds look like, or the flowers, which is fantastic. So that's a really nice um, plant design. Uh, it doesn't have to be that complicated or complex. It can be simple. And again, if you just have a, a, a simple one design, that's fine. The only reason why I say if you want to make it a bit more complex, I can give you more specific feedback, and that feedback can help the rest of your design. As we get into uh, the local survey, so nurseries, local farms, really do, do your work here. It can save you a lot of time if you decide to go forward with your projects. And then forced edibles by season, which I loved. This was probably one of my favorite local plant surveys I've ever seen because she said, here's what we can eat uh, in the forced edibles by season. If you want to do that, please do. I think it, it's a great value to you and your site. And then she gave us a little plant survey working with that same structure. So zone one, I'm kind of moving backwards here. I have to go to the beginning of her assignment. There we go. I think that's the one. Yeah, zone one. So zone one design, we're looking at the different elements. She's given us a different map. She's given us the zone map. She's given us the microclimate map. She's given us um, our cross section. She's given us some photos. So she's landing me in the site to really let me know what that zone is. Not just the plan view, but letting me know what is there existing. And then we go into the existing conditions and the proposed design patterns. And so she's leveraging off the previous assignment, giving me a sense of it. And then she's starting to put in some of these, these elements to let me know this is the dry garden, the solar bowl, bowl, the living room outdoors, to really make me understand what the site is. She's giving me a water management layer. Please do this and please, 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 please manage your overflow. Do not put a rain barrel, do not put a pond without telling me where the water goes. I want to know that you're considering the fact that any storage inside your system is a drop in the bucket and that drop in the bucket will eventually fill and overflow. So she has, uh, first and foremost, she has a pond and she pumps up to higher in her landscape, giving herself enough head pressure to do a little bit of drip irrigation and overflow. And then each one of these elements have overflow that moves to different areas. And you can see how she's, how she's put this all and she has labeled everything. If there is a thing on the map, we are putting it over here. Please, please, please continue this pattern and make sure to always label everything, including your contour lines as she has here. And then we have our proposed plan. So this is, we've gone from our water management plan. Remember, plant the water first, then plant the plants. And she's really shown me what goes where. Now, this is actually after a lot of my design advice, which was she had 
these were all full paths and I found that walking paths always, always are necessary. So she cut out some, some space and instead of going completely down slope, which was her first uh, tie at this, we went on a cross slope. So that way it wouldn't become channelized and become an issue. Initially she had um, a uh, eating area that was further north and I recommended that you put it in the sun and put it closer to the house. Just makes this whole outdoor living room living area really nice and really lovely um, and then gave her a couple of recommendations around plans so as I can see and understand a site I can give recommendations if I can't I can't a uh, little bit more just showing some of the Illinois uh, uh, red mulberry Illinois everbearing uh, showing some espalier uh, mulberries which is a neat idea showing the huga cultures that she wants to put in and then alternative, alternative energy systems, where they may go and why she might be using them. She lives in a tiny house and her big idea is to actually make an outdoor living area. That was the bigger idea there. Then as we get into the building survey, it was another really excellent assignment. Gave me a sense of the indigenous folks there, sourced everything so I knew where everything came from. Then the local network, who are the designers, who are the instructors, who are the people she can lean upon. And then we get into her final design. And her final design is stunning. Um, it's, it's definitely high level, but at the same time, you can do this with pencil and, pencil and crayon. You do not have to use computer programs. Do not stress about a computer program with what you can do with pencil and paper. Please go back to pencil and paper if you're finding it's too much time. You don't have to learn computer programs. There's lots of people to connect and guild with um, to render your designs as I do all the time. So concept plan, she gave us the goals and at the same time she gave us that, um, that new zone map. So nice connection there. She gave us an entire water management and soil fertility plan. Please, please, please do not forget this. This is where a lot of people lose marks. But really took a look at the nitrogen fixers, biomass producers, hygge culture, mulch, compost, gray water, really gave me a sense of where all those elements lived. And then cut up the concept plan so that we had the front of the property and we had the middle of the property. And then the back of the property is, is a zone five. And so she left that out. Um, then she went into the best, and I mean this, the best phasing plan I've ever seen. Uh, so much so that I've adopted this phasing plan as my own when I work with clients. So first off, she gave us earthworks, water, vegetation, structure. She worked with the key line scale of permanence. Fantastic. Second, she gave us a year by year by year by year structure. And then she gave us winter, spring, summer, fall, and roughly what the cost of each of these elements would be with a sum total at the bottom, giving us a sense of what she would have to invest every single year and what the running total was. Again, cannot, cannot, cannot recommend this enough. Really important work here. Really fantastic to see. And again, used color in a really, really great way. Uh, pretty excited about all of that, as you can tell my voice, cost in Canadian dollars. So if you're in euros, if you're in pounds, if you're in rem rem B, if you're in, um, uh, if you're in whatever your currency is, make sure we know what it is. She worked in the principles, gave us a sense of what about those principles are and what community would look like and done. So there you go, folks. I wanted to do this little video to give you a sense about what's coming up. Um, what are some of the elements for uh, weeks eight, nine, and 10? And again, source everything, make sure you let me know where overflow is, be specific in what you do. That allows me to give you feedback or if anybody else in the course is watching this, uh, this allows your, your instructors to give feedback and have fun. Um, again, don't get bogged down in computer programs. Uh, if, if it's just easier to take a printout and start drawing with pencil and paper, please do make sure it's legible. Make sure you're always draw, writing or drawing horizontally so we can always read it. Don't make us turn the page or rotate the image. It's really frustrating for us and, and can take away from us understanding your site because um, the highest value of having us take a look at the site is to give you really good feedback and hopefully help you with this draft working design. Let me say that again, a draft working design. This is a working design that needs to be further ground truth it has to be ground truth with people in your area um, and probably pass through another local designer in your area just to make sure that you're not off your rocker i do what's called a red team design charrette all the time for all my designs including what i do around my site and i bring uh, colleagues of mine and i ask them to tell me why i am wrong i ask them those exact questions what tell me why i'm wrong in this i just did one for a recent garden i just put in on around my house 
because I that's how I learn. Um, pull out your colleagues; they are incredible, um, and it can give you a lot of good feedback. Hope that's useful, and all the best with the rest of the course. Looking forward to seeing your work, and uh, thanks so much for being part of this work. We need as many people as possible involved in actively working with natural capital and actively working with instead of against nature.